you know, one of the things that I think is interesting is that uh, a lot of them are very much, you know, been listening to since since Black Phillip, right? Yeah, that's and, going back almost 15 years. And what's interesting even about that is that I didn't realize that we kind of invented this whole red pill thing. Yo, what's up on this episode? Uh, we talk about uh, how I believe that we invented the red pill movement. Uh, we talk about why uh, some people seek out abusive relationships, the importance of giving response, being responsible to what you say and do, how you can impact someone's life in a very small and easy way. Um, we discuss um, a bunch of stuff, and I, I go into a couple of theories and some stuff that went down at the Skank Fest, and, and uh, it, was dope. it was dope. Yeah, we, we also talk about uh, the responsibility that we have when we're doing consultations, and uh, speaking of which, uh, if you need a consultation, uh, you can get one from me. You can hit me up via email, advicefromharry at gmail.com. And I will help you with whatever relationship or life advice you need. We can set up rates for a consultation. If you want Dante's, you can go to uh, DanteNero.com uh, and click on consult, correct? Yep. Right. And, and, uh, and also, if you want to help out the show in a different way, uh, join us over at Patreon.com slash Manschool202. That's where we do all the bonus content. That's where we do uh, the listener mail. And uh, that helps us a lot because, uh, you know, if you sign up to support us with a, with a monthly, monthly fee, that helps us keep the show rolling and it helps keep this uh, side of the show rolling. And we appreciate you no matter what. Thank you guys so much. All right. Love y'all. I'm not an alpha male. I'm not a beta male either. I'm just a better man. Better man. Well, put your happiness first because if you don't, they won't. Yo, 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 what's up, y'all? GYBB, get your balls back. WWDD, what would Dante do? The sexual revolution is being podcasted, and I am excited. Harry, what's going on, bro? Are oh, you rock and roll? Absolutely, I'm ready to rock and roll. You know me, I'm just out here trying to live my best life. And then I found out the other day, I'm not trying. Apparently, I'm doing I'm doing it. Crazy. I'm living my best Crazy. life. This whole time, I thought I was trying. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, I'm good. I'm good. I just got back from Skankfest. Oh, um, how was that? How was Skankfest? Nice. Fans are the fans are fucking amazing. I have to never met a bunch of people more uh, into comedy than yeah, those. yeah, very much. A lot of fans of the show, a lot of lot of dudes telling me I changed their lives, saved their lives. A dude came up to me, he was like, "I'm married, I got a four year, four month old baby." And it's all due to, you know, you talking to me. And the, I mean, a lot of them refer Black Phillip, um, you know, and what, you know, the original show and some, and they listen to it now. And, you know, just, it felt good. It was really, really cool that they were all into it, you know? Into nice, it, man. It's always know. good seeing fans and stuff in person. Like, cause yeah. you forget you broadcast these things. And yeah. then they just go out. We put them together and they just Shoot go out. out into space, and, uh, into the abyss yeah. without thinking of how it how it affects people. And um, also it's um, it's it's interesting to hear a real life situation. Like, dude, so it was like, man, he showed me his baby. He had a four month old baby. And oh, you like um, seeing the actual physical proof. Yeah. yeah like, yeah. show me. Yeah. Show me how it happened. I want to know. I want to know that your jizz worked, that we got it working into oh, yeah, the eggs, the whole thing. Step, showed me the sonogram. Yeah. Then uh, <laughs> the lock I'll see of all hair. Of Show me some of his wife's pussy hair. No, yeah. she didn't even show me his pussy hair. But because um, that would be weird. I mean, that she's got pussy hair. That would weird. be, yeah. You, though that's where your problem is. She shouldn't have any is what you're yeah. saying. Yeah, but I mean, it was just nice. I mean, I, I countless, countless. And they're really, really surprised that you'll actually talk to them. You know? Oh, really? Okay. Yeah, yeah they, they, you know, they put you on this kind of pedal. And when it comes down to it, I'm a regular dude. Mm. I'm a regular dude with 16 furs. I mean, come on. What are you going to do? Yeah. Everybody has you that. Put, you, put your, uh, you put your leather pants on one leg at a time like everybody right, else. Right, right, right. Yeah. That's the and thing people don't understand. You put a, a mink fur on one arm at a time like everyone else. That's it. I put my dolphin boxers on. One leg at a time. Do you know what I mean? So it is. So if the dolphin, it would be the dolphin skin. It yeah, would have skin, boxes. Yeah, you skin the dolphins. Yeah. That's supposed to keep you warm or keep you cool. I don't know how that would work. 
uh, it keeps you dry. It's oh, weird. because it's water resistant. Yeah, yeah. It's from see, a dolphin. See, gotcha. there, you go, there you go. Well, I mean, you know, I don't tell nobody. Uh, What's the weirdest people. thing you, you bought a- animal wise? I know you like the furs and stuff. What's the weirdest one? I guess my eel skin jacket. An eel skin jacket. Damn, that's got to be a lot of eels for one jacket. A lot of no? eels. A lot of eels. A lot of eels. But I mean, it's a shit. If it's a bear skin, I, if I got a bear skin, it's a. It's a couple of bears. They're putting them in. I guess, but at least, you know, I, I don't know how many eels you'd have to. I feel less bad about the eels because as human beings, we are we are less sad about the animals that are not cute or yeah. uh, or that we can't pretend are in a cartoon. So they don't have big brown eyes. You yeah. Know what I mean? Yeah. So Here, here's a weird thing that I thought about the other day. Maybe you can. I forget that uh, monkeys and chimpanzees, they're they're herbivores. Her, her, herbivores right they only no. they don't eat meat do they eat meat yeah they eat meat they, they eat do each other monkeys and chimpanzees see i didn't know yeah. this they will eat each other bro will they actually eat or will they rip each other apart they like, will rip each other apart and eat each other uh, this is interesting now i could have looked that up but instead i just asked you yeah that's what you do a lot you just I ask do. me questions then way. i gotta go look it up yeah yeah, yeah. uh so I, because I am your Google, not unlike your dad. Oh, jeez. Right? <laughs> You're more accurate, so, though. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I got that. I do have that. Uh, you know that thing that I think that's my compulsive disorder that I gotta know. The OCD. Everything. You need to know the answer for it. Yeah. It was really good to meet the fans. Really, really good to meet the fans. Um. Um. Sometimes you also don't know how deep, how far your reach is. Hmm. You know how many people listen? I mean, because we do this as as you know, like we do this pretty religiously. We've been doing this nine years. You know, in the internet, it lasts forever. Um, and I really, you know, one of the things that I think is interesting is that a lot of them are very much, you know, been listening to since since Black Phillip, right? Yeah, that's and, going back almost 15 years. Yeah, to, 2006. Yeah. Um, and what's interesting even about that is that I didn't realize that we kind of invented this whole red pill thing, this whole red pill movement. Um, you know, when you talk about uh, what's the guy named Andrew Tate and uh, yeah, Andrew Tate and. Uh, and and what's his name? Uh, Sam, um, Kevin Samuels, and Brifola our Lord, Hammond. our Lord and Savior, Kevin Samuels. <laughs> no name above that name. No name above <clears throat> that name. Um, you know, uh, even you know, Sneeko's a fan of the show, but like he's heavy in the f- fit and fresh. Yeah, uh, those just, are all little or oh, the coaching tree they call it in football. And, yeah, preaching, the preaching, Abba. Yeah. And all those guys were listening to that. They they were listening to that show and and you know what Patrice and I was talking about at that point in time. And and it's it's interesting too because uh I feel like you know it is it's evolved and I think sometimes I like these guys are grabbing on to pieces of it that we've already kind of moved past. With this um, show, yeah, for sure. Um, how does that I, how does that make you feel or, or the, the impact? Because some of it is really good stuff that makes sense. And then some people take it and go for uh, just they go real far out there and it becomes just aggressive hate. I I did not know. How should I put this? I, I, I didn't. So, you know, my whole involvement with the with the Proud Boys and stuff, I actually got a kid. A kid that ran up under me from from the Proud Boys, and so this is this is interesting. Wait, this during Skankfest, or this is yeah during else? Skankfest, oh, yeah. during Skankfest, yeah. And so he kind of he kind of kicked it to me like yo, you know, Uhuru, which is a was a call. I'm not even sure why or whatever, but uh, you know, I had moved myself away from that from from some yeah. quite as soon as it went several so years went, ago yeah it went and when it when it went racial and stuff it's just like unlike well, a, it started just to just because some people don't know give a brief summary of how how that happened because it, it started out with you were hanging out with gavin mcginnis who at the time was kind of honestly, building we weren't up. even hanging out he had he's this is early on in the, in the you know the podcast boom and he 
was doing a podcast. I fi- I, I forget. It's called Free Speech or Get Off My Lawn or something like that. Something. And um, well, unfortunately for Gavin, Gavin gets fired every uh, at least once a year or something from whatever platform. So he has to constantly relabel yeah. the thing and start over with a new new uh, platform or show. And um, I I knew that he was doing this thing, and it was a lot of young white dudes who I who I I, I feel as though like this whole the whole incel thing started blowing up, and there was all these young white dudes who felt disenfranchised and. And and felt as though that women they weren't getting their fair shake with women and and all kinds of stuff and it just it's just a, a you know grievance you know just like male grievance about how they're being treated by women and um, and I went on his show to basically to help people. I mean, that's always been my my thing in general is like, you know, how can I help people? How can I help people? Whereas I, I believe in a lot of cases, a lot of people, uh, their their intention aren't, aren't necessarily pure. It's, a you know, maybe they want to help. But for the most part, it's usually there's a marketing thing about it, which is, I guess, dumb on my part, because, I mean, I could have. Um, but it becomes about this personality, like, you know, he's top, top G, Andrew Tate and Kevin Samuels, who was basically a dude who was a stylist and, a, you know, and these guys who who just recognize that um, doing this and being obnoxious about what they do is uh, well, it's a brand. It, I mean, it draws it just eyes. sells more. Yeah, it sells, it sells a lot more. Yeah. I we realized could that we could definitely be making a lot more money if we were less credible about what we did and how we did it. Yeah. But it's just not what we want to do. Like, it's not what I want to do. No, I don't want that. I don't want that. I, I mean, I. it's funny. I was doing a serious radio and uh, and I, I, I remember uh, they were interviewing uh, Stephen A. Smith. And, uh, you know, Stephen F. Stephen A. Smith is a controversial figure because some people some people like him. A lot of people don't like him. A lot, a lot, but I, but I really feel like he's a dude who has uh, figured out a way to make money off of people hating him, just like they make money off of people loving him. Controversy creates cash. It creates a lot of buzz yeah. for whatever reason. People like to tune into negativity a lot more than they tune into positivity. It's just more intriguing. Which is also one of the principles that I understand more than anything is like when you look at these women and they're calling Kevin Samuels, even though a lot of what he was saying is is true, you know, it's just he's spitting facts. But a lot of them, there's, there's you know, women are under certain trauma. I mean, we all have a certain level of trauma that we're dealing with and the the... And when you when you're under a level of trauma, you you put yourself in a situation so that you can experience that trauma over and over and over again. And uh, uh, it just um, I realize that they you know, when you're under this trauma and you've been treated like crap your whole life, you expect it doesn't feel right if you're not getting that from somebody when it doesn't feel right when somebody's um respecting you or talking to you you're not used to it is what you're saying do you if you grow up in an environment where you're where things are so chaotic or uh where you're abused you don't you almost can't fathom the idea of somebody treating you righteously and nicely and it becomes problematic for you to deal with because you're not used to that and you don't think that you deserve it Correct. Yeah. You don't yeah. You, you don't think you deserve it. And then you wonder what's wrong with the other person. Or so there's, what, there's yeah. an affinity to to what you're accustomed to because it feels normal. Years ago, uh, Patricia and I used to talk about the whole idea of brackish fish. Um, I'll go over that real quick. It's uh, where we would have um, he had a this huge fish tank, 400 gallon fish tank, and he wanted fish that was sturdy. But, you know, like beautiful, like colorful and aggressive and stuff. So he didn't want to go the ice, ice tea thing where he put sharks in his, in his, you know, under his, uh, behind his couch. And so, so he got these African cichlid fishes, fish in, the, in a, 
in a in a town in a in Tanzania. And the, the fish live in this water that's very uh, has a lot of bacteria in it. it uh, there's an African tribe around it. They shit in it. They pee in it. They would. So it's not, you know, it's not like we we're talking about. They don't have a a, a plant a a power plant that cleans cleans their water. And the fish live in that water. And so when you buy these fish, right? Um, very aggressive fish. They're probably more aggressive than piranhas, but they don't they don't kill in. They don't feed in schools. So they don't, you know, they just won't all team up and and beautiful, beautiful fish. But but when you get the fish tank, you have to build, you have to, you have to have a certain amount because it's part salt and it's part fresh water. But it's, it's very also, different from most fish. It's a very it specific has a, way. A, a, uh, or, bacteria too. Yeah. Well, because the the fish were dying and, and Patrice didn't understand why. And well, he didn't know the, they weren't dying because he just picked the fish and he had a guy who was taking uh uh he 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 had a guy that was taking care of the fish for him. Right. He paid a guy to come in and clean the tank and service it. So the guy always made sure that the that the guy was charging him something like forty nine bucks a month and whatever. And and one day uh he didn't have the he didn't have he was short a little money, like nine dollars. And the guy said he needs his nine dollars. He was like he didn't want to take it the next time around. And so uh, Patrice went in a change bottle and ki- counted out nine dollars and nickels, right? <laughs> and he was just so angry that he he fired the dude. Mm. So you fuck this, I'm gonna do it myself. So what happened was he he the water was too clean, and when the they the put these these aggressive the water that most of the fish most of the fish. Uh are able to swim in fine was too clean for this Couldn't. particular fish. And the, the fish were either, they were actually like frozen. Like they weren't they weren't moving. They weren't swimming. They would it looked like his whole fish tank looked like a painting. Right. <laughs> and and then some of them died. Some of the fish died, lost a couple of the fish and they were pretty expensive fish to to get some in some cases. Um and uh you realize you know the thing that just just kind of clicks in your head is that oh oh these the they they're so accustomed to the aggressiveness of this water the toxicity of this water to not be in this toxic environment is painful to them almost to the point where they, they it well i mean it well, not almost i mean some of the fish actually died from swimming in clean water and so, so if you're in a relationship that, yeah in a relationship in human terms that somebody who grows up in an abusive relationship can't function in a non-abusive relationship because that's what they're used to right. breathing in, basically. It's unfamiliar. Mentally. Like respect and somebody having empathy for you and stuff is stuff that is is a, is a feeling that's a, that's uncomfortable to you so that you you literally get to a point where you 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 you're longing for that and then, and I've actually been in relationships with women have been in very toxic situations where they will create a problem even when there's not a problem. Um, they will make a problem or they will do things that self sabotage them. So it's just like, it's a weird concept when you think that the kindness and goodness with somebody who is not accustomed to having that is literally poison to them in a sense. You know, they have a reaction, almost an allergic reaction to that. And, and they respond with, uh, with a, a need to create chaos you know yeah um and that's one of those concepts you guys talked about on the black phillip show yeah which yeah. is and i guess it yeah i guess it could lead to probably did lead to the red pill movement to a degree or it impacted no, it, it for it sure it absolutely did you they, know? they quote it all over the, yeah i mean i've heard i've heard them they've all quoted it they've all talked about it not 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 necessarily talked about it in terms of me because i wasn't as famous um, you know, but they talked, they absolutely quoted Patrice and stuff, the stuff that we had talked about. And, that, and you know, I, I mean, I do when people listen to the show now, I do get guys that were like, oh, you know, I kind of always kind of aligned with your thinking a little bit more because, you know, Patrice was a little more angry. But um, but I also I didn't have the same I didn't have the same I had my own trauma, but I didn't have I didn't have an abuse from women. 
um, because there's an attractiveness. I mean, like I was classically when I was younger, I was, you know, I was in shape, had the six pack, uh, had the cum gutters and all of that. And it was so women didn't really get me. They they they, they weren't. A be- I mean, because women, when they're unattracted to you, they, it's it's ugly how obvious and how honest they can be about being unattractive to you. To the same token, if you're if you're the the the, the person that they're pursuing and you reject them in instantly you're gay it's literally how could you not want to fuck me and because i don't like you Mm -hmm. i don't think you're attractive gets cold real quick yeah yeah and it's um yeah and and not only get cold but there has to be a justification for why i don't want to fuck you um so i i remember going through that a lot in my youth but i but for the most part i could you know I never really was lonely, never didn't have a bunch of chicks checking for me, whatever. And it was, you know, it made like life easier also because your standards are lower. I mean, I remember when I really when I started stripping and I felt like, you know, women were really coming at me. I was I was fucking a lot of awful chicks, chicks that I would never think about fucking that weren't even up to. But I just felt like it was my my it was my obligation. You need dick. I'm supposed to provide it. You know, so you were like the the uh, the Johnny Appleseed, but just with dick. Yeah, yeah. Spread, I just, you're like I gotta spread my dick everywhere. Yeah, just charity, just a lot of charity work. I mean, not hideous, but you know, some some sixes and stuff where I, fives and sixes that I probably wouldn't. I mean, I probably would have did a two fives together sometimes, but that's neither here nor there. The, the, you know, I, things I wouldn't do now. Um. And so, you know, watching the, the the evolution of it and how it lives in it lives in infamy. Those things we said, and it lives in infamy, which is which is a scary thing because when you talk about something like the Proud Boys, you you start to realize that what you say and what you teach. I mean, literally, I was one of the founders of the Proud Boys, and now it's considered a terrorist and white. I mean, it's so just to think that I was on the base. Look, the ground level of that before it morphed into something else and before it morphed into yeah and in you a way a, you didn't you didn't help found you didn't intentionally help found a white supremacist uh not at all terrorist group my 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 my, my oops in- <laughs> <laughs> accidents Oopsie. happen dante oops my did bad I, did i do that you know like it's like <laughs> my so it bad. starts to make you it starts to, starts to make you realize, and so from that, I realized I, that I gotta think about that. By the way, next time I fuck up and go, all right, well, I mean, at least I didn't accidentally start a white supremacist right. group. Use my failure as a way to make you feel good. I'm here for you, Gary. I'm here for you. <laughs> um, but you realize how how important it is, especially within this day and age, with the way internet is and the way things live forever. Um, you got to You not only got to be honest. I mean, I, I mean, to be honest, a lot of the stuff is how I felt at the time. Um, but uh, but even the stuff that that was that I thought had a good balance to it. You cannot just speak your honesty and truth when people listen to you. There's a responsibility that I, I realize, and I, I don't think other people realize that because every time I watch CNN or I watch, you know, something and they're talking about the Proud Boys, I'm like, yo, I, you know, I, I birthed that. I helped birth that. And my intention was only good. My intention was to be good. And I realized that your intentions, it, it just doesn't, honesty and being intentive is not enough. You also have to think about how people who, who will um twist things or how they'll take that information and what you got to make the information. It yeah. Yeah. Twist proof. Almost. Yeah. I mean, it happens. Look, Albert Einstein split the atom. Yeah. And then they figured out how to make an atomic bomb with it. And you he know, was that... he was literally one of the things that he said that Albert Einstein said this is one of the worst things he ever did was put there. You know, it's just like because I like that he thinking... said it's one of one of the worst things. I would yeah. love to know what else is on that well, list. He did a lot what of. I mean, one of the things I regret, if I'm going to list it, probably yeah. helping create the atomic bomb. But, you know, 
also move the move science ahead in in, in such sure. a way. But I think people take things and they and I think in order you you have to you have a responsibility to make sure that whatever it is you do, you make it unbendable. Like so that if you if somebody co-ops your your message, they co-op your message in a way that you can say, well, what about the empathy? You know? Yeah. And they go, well, well, how is that? How is what you're saying his philosophy when you when you you're not just, including all of it? Yeah. You didn't inc- you you included pieces of it. And you're cherry it. picking. Yeah. So it's a really interesting thing when you talk about responsibility and when you are marketing this to people, when it's a brand, when it becomes a brand, the brand becomes more important than the integrity consistency of the brand. Well, there's a danger there. You have that. You when you say you you have a responsibility, technically they don't. You know, you choose to have that responsibility because yeah. you want to be a righteous person. That's why we do the podcast the way we do, and we try to make everything. You know, listen. I still every when, when I do consultations and stuff. Every once in a while, I'm like, oh, okay. I I read. I I find out that somebody kind of twisted something that we said yeah. not intentionally but like oh they viewed it with a little bit of an angle that we have to make clear yes because sometimes people take things either out of context or they take a specific aspect of it and go in a different direction but we give a shit about that but there's people online andrew tate in particular saying some egregious shit and it bugs me because you you go there's some somebody who doesn't know what they're doing taking this information yeah. and it is wrong information just and it's not righteous and I'm not saying all of it I, I don't follow him like extensively but I mean one time he was talking about uh what was he talking about that he can cheat on his uh, he can sleep around with other women and she can't and that's just the way it is not in the sense of this is the agreement we made but this is what it is because I'm a man and she's a woman okay when you say that yeah clear that up because even that as much as you're explaining i know what you mean yeah this is exactly what so this is it you know i I don't know if the fans understand this that one of the reasons why um you know harry started doing consultations and why when you talk to me about it in the first place is it's almost like like after you get your black belt right Mm mm-hmm um, so I have a, a, a I'm a, you know, and, and it, so, wow. It, it, so there's something that I say, and I don't know if I say it enough, um, because I did a consultation last week and I, and I, I mentioned these things and one of them was, was, uh, the true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts, how they relate to situations that seem irrelevant, but really are not. And I say that often, I say it, I don't say it clearly enough. And I think also because when I do say it, people don't really understand what I mean and they don't care. They don't ask. Like, I have to also understand that everybody, everybody's not like me. If you ask me something and I don't know it, I'm going to Google it and research it and make it. So I've said that um, many times and I realized that somebody who's been listening to us, somebody who did some consultations with have been listening to me, I've been consulting with me for years. Not, well, maybe not years, but a, a good amount of time. And has listened to the show for many, for a long time. Didn't even know what that mean. Harry, do you you know what I mean by that? Which like, phrase? The Didn't true wisdom. What, true, wisdom true wisdom is the understanding of underlying concepts, how it relates to situations that seem irrelevant, yeah. but really are not. Well, it, it, it's that the same sort of thinking and pathology in your brain, the the logic that you use for one thing can be related to another thing. So the same set of disciplines that you bring into a relationship can be applied to your business career and vice versa, even though that doesn't appear obvious up front. Mm. But keeping your word is an important part of your business just as much as it is a part of your relationship. It's just that we never uh conflate the two or, or well uh conflate would be to to mix it when it shouldn't be mixed right so, fair enough yeah so i would think we never associate the two we always think of the two things as different which is why there's huge problems like how many intelligent like for example a thing with women how many intelligent women who are successful at business do you know 
that are lousy have lousy relationship histories right because they bring they they're not connecting it same thing with guys there's plenty of guys who are successful how many guys do we know that are successful making millions and they don't have any management or control of what's going on in their personal life or their relationships because they don't carry it the same way i literally way. say all yeah what's interesting yeah. is all like i very rarely know anybody that has it figured out on both ends of it, you know? And then you hear rumor of guys who like high level dudes, I mean, talking multimillionaire dudes who have, who have these problems who don't even understand this. Um, so it's a, it, so again, so let me, let me back up. One of the things about you, what, what I thought was important about you doing consultations is because even when, before you started doing paid consultations, you would, you know, people would ask you questions and stuff like that. And, and then you would give them an answer and I would go, no, no, no. Yes. But no, Mm. meaning yes, you're on the right track, but yes, no, you're not all the way there. Like it's not, it's not like the optimum. That's a portion of it. That's accurate, but there's more further. There's more information or there's more, more technique involved. I, so I guess I I guess I could say, um, you know, that people say there's no right answers. Every everybody does things the way they want to do. No, there is a right answer. The right answer is the most optimum way in which if if so, I say, and it's it's interesting how I'm as I'm getting old, I'm starting to see how all these things that I say lead into the other. So something I say all the time, you hear me say this all the time, that time is the commodity. What does that mean? Time me- means that without time, without time, you have nothing. Um, our lives are finite. And the fact that our lives are, are finite mean that we, you only have a certain amount of time to make the best of this life. Sure. And if you are doing it half ass you are wasting time because you won't live the best version of your life until you do it all the way right. Not just mostly right. Um, Something else I say, which is, which relates to this is that if you are 85% trustworthy, you're still untrustworthy. The definition, the definition of you being untrustworthy is being is not being trustworthy all the time. And I understand I'm taking it into with the reason of reasonable perspective that everything is not perfect. Nobody's perfect. So people make mistakes, but what, what we literally have to be able to say for you to say that I have a friend and he's trustworthy. What you have to be able to say is they tell the truth all the time. They are always credible, not some of the time, not 80% of the time, not 15, not even 90% of the time. All the time. Now, I do understand that there are exceptions to the rule, which is the same thing when you come into a relationship. Like truth has to be ultimate. It has to be your your intent has to be built in truthfulness. And so when you. Once you get your black belt in in this. It is you can really have a good life. And you can survive doing 50% of what you know is right. Mm. Yeah. Maybe even less than that, because if we think about the guys that we know that are rich, that don't, that rich and have money and, if, if you know, are credible and show up and whatever, and then in their relationship, they're in relationships that's miserable, that are miserable, and they're dishonest about the fact that they're miserable Maybe even less than that, maybe 35, 40 percent of if you do it, you can still live a pretty decent life. Uh, but in order for you to live the your best life, you got to you have to revisit those principles over and over and over again. There's not a good enough answer. There's the best answer. You and I, we used to talk about this a lot when when I would say. Uh, when you're you're. Uh, hypothetical situation you go out on a date and a woman is not being appreciative of all that you're doing and you go you get to the point where you just don't like how you're being treated you go listen um i um 
yeah, I'm done with this. I'm not really comfortable with this. I'm not having a good time. And I don't want to continue to spend my time, my energy, my money on somebody who doesn't appreciate what I'm doing, right? Most guys, in order to be nice, will say, I'm, I don't want to waste your time. And I don't want to waste my time. Um, and, and that's and, wait, just to just to jump in there. That would be the equivalent of that would probably still get you a good result. Sure, sure. Fifty percent of the time, because that's maybe still even jarring. more than that. That's maybe, still maybe, jarring. Yeah, you're yeah. right. But black belt going to be the best you can be, and you cut right to the chase. My time, because I'm most not, people don't I even don't, say I don't want to waste yeah, my time. My time. Yeah. Because and why is that? In, why is that disingenuous? Why is it saying I don't want to waste your time and I, you know, I don't want you to waste my time? Because you're lying. Because you're that's lying. not what you're concerned about. You're concerned about your time. You just don't want to hurt the other person's feelings. And, and there's no reason for you to be because you're not trying to waste her time. Yeah. You are in there. You're in this trying to meet somebody being present. You've made the date. You your pocket is full of money, or your car. There's money in the bank account. You're ready to spend time, energy, and so on and so forth to have to find really to find out if this is the person you want to spend time with and want to be with. And they're being difficult. And because they're being difficult, you have decided that this is no longer worth it to you. Being difficult, or they're being rude, or they're just being themselves, which is not. Which what is you want could be all of those person. things. Could be yeah. difficult, rude, unappreciative, selfish, whatever. I mean, and, and I'm talking about this in terms of a in terms of from a masculine perspective, but it's it's either side. If if somebody is not appreciating you, and um, what happens overall is you you want to soften the cushion. You don't want to be honest, but but being partially honest is is lying. There's no way to put or no other way to put it. You either you either are honest or you're not. And and so you say something like, I don't want to waste your time. Which is you don't really care about your time. First, you don't care about her time. You are there present. You're not wasting your time. The, the fact that you're out on this date means that you're you're trying to be there. She is the culprit. She is the one that or, or 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 if you're a woman, he is the culprit. He is the one that's not not moving in good faith. And so for you to say, I don't want to waste your time. She, somebody who's treating you like that doesn't care about your time. And, that, and that's really what the point is. And so to say, I don't care. I don't want you. I will not let you waste my time is important because it communicates to this person a that you're worthy of of whatever you get that you understand what your importance is how important it is to you and that you're you're not going to tolerate some nonsense from somebody who doesn't respect you and to be honest it's fine that they don't respect you there's people that don't respect people all the time. The point is that you just don't give those people access. And, and what we have done in the society is we've created a situation where shitheads get to be shitheads. And everybody tiptoes around them as if we don't know that they're shitheads. Instead yeah. of being honest about what it really is. People sell themselves, are willing to sell out emotionally so quickly. So for guys, it's about getting laid. So you sell out every, all your integrity in order to get laid. In business, you sell out your integrity in order to make a deal so it makes you money. You know, people, that's the difference is when you don't sell those things out, you in theory lose, but you don't lose. You win because you, you don't win. have to deal with the nonsense and what you get is a better quality of business or life, whatever. Better quality of life. And yeah. so even when I was really thinking about talking to you about doing consultations you are now responsible you are responsible for these people oh yeah i feel that i feel that by the way i have to do follow-ups which is on my list of like things i got to get done there's people who've hit me up that are going through treatment like i mean uh alcohol drug drugs and alcohol treatment there's people dealing with uh, family members that have passed away, and I, I want to hit them back up and go just to check in and go, are you, 
you know, I haven't heard from you in a bit. Like, I take that seriously because this is a person who's putting a portion of their life in my hands. Yeah. And if I give the wrong thing and I say the wrong thing, that could really send somebody, especially somebody who's going through treatment, could send them off on a spiral if I if I say the wrong thing. So I take that very preciously, very significantly. And I think it also, the other thing is that it, you go, how could I tell this person to do this? Mm-hmm. And I'm not doing it myself. Yeah. You, 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 it is a talking to people and telling people what to do and how to do it and what your experiences put. So this is a symbiotic, this is a symbiotic relationship because me, that's you. That's a good word. Give, that's a TI word. Very, yeah, yeah. very. You, you giving me autonomy. There's another one for you. Uh, the, you giving me autonomy over your life. What do I do? How do I fix this? If you give me autonomy and you let me drive, I can't drive the car off the cliff. I, I, I cannot be reckless about what I do. And one of the things that I, when I was at Skankfest, it was just really interesting how readily uh, people are. First of all, how 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 people are so frustrated and they're so uh, helpless in a way that they're so willing to just relinquish the control to people, to your Andrew Tate, to your Kevin Samuels, to people who say, I have the answers. I mean, because people are sheep. I want to talk about that too. So remind me my 95, just remind me 95 and five. Um, 95 and five. Okay. Yeah. So um, how willing and well, then people are you- desperate. It's not even, you know, for me, I think it's, it, when you're in a desperate place and you're hurting, you look for answers to make the pain go away. And if you're not, you know, relationships and wanting to date, th- there is a form of hurt, a loneliness that comes from it. I, and I experienced that in my younger days. It's a lonely feeling. It's a sad feeling to not be loved. So when that happens, people get desperate and they look for the answers. And sometimes the way people package things, it becomes like a very appealing answer. But if you delve deep, you realize it's just the packaging. It's just the marketing. Yeah. And that there's a danger to that because that's no different than a cult. That's the same thing when you look for answers and you end up in a cult. And you end up, and then you're just following along. And and this is so. So another thing I say is, is show me the work. You got to show me the work. Hmm. What I mean by that is, if you when you were young and you were it's a student in school and you're doing math like doing ex, you know polynomials or whatever you're doing linear equations, and the teacher would say, show me the work. Show me how you got to this point, right? Show me how you got the answer. And the importance of showing you, showing me the work is that you, it, it's like, it's a way of proofing yourself. It's a way of knowing that you're on the right track. Because if there's some kind of incons, inconsistency, yeah, yeah, inconsistencies Same in same what, you, what you're saying, you will see it when you, when you go back over it. So, um, but I mean, so, so like, you know, I was just thinking about all the things that I need to start. I, I need to have to I need to codify all these little state statements and I need to, uh, you know, I'm, I, I'm you know, I'm writing my book now and I'm, I need to codify them, what they mean, because once you have these statements and you really understand these statements, you literally can do it. You, you can come up with the answers on your own. I know I'm probably putting my myself out of business because then they don't have to ask me because they have the principles. Um, you know, you, you know, people do think, Oh man, I'm, I, I got this girl and then she's, she's long distance. And I, I got this other girl that I'm, that I'm, that's lives in my town and I'm acting like, you know, and she thinks I'm in this relationship and we're really close, but she's far away. And I need this, I need the comfort of having a woman in my own town. And, and I'm, and I'm like, well, you gotta, you gotta say that. I mean, is it, is it really unreasonable to say that? I don't think so. No. The problem is you think you're going to lose one or you think by being honest, you think you're going to lose one when the reality is nine, 99% of the time you don't. No. Because what you're saying in the process of you saying, here's the truth, and that I'm worth the truth, that I'm worth um, not having a long distance relationship that is unsatisfying. 
you go, I'm, 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 I'm worthy of happiness. And, and this is how I feel. And this is what's going on with me. And, but people don't want to let go because they don't feel like they have the value. People don't feel they have the value. So they don't want to bet on themselves. So right. they don't, they, they play not to lose yeah. is what they ultimately do. So you try to play the safe game so that you don't end up losing. And, but what you do is you settle for a lesser quality of life or a lesser quality of relationship when you do that. Or lesser, lesser quality of happiness. And, and it's interesting because I remember you would be, I wouldn't be around you and you would be running into your friends and they would, you know, they have a situation and you would be tossing advice around, you know, just before doing consultations. And then yeah. sometimes you call me up, yo, let me, this, check this out. I'm, I'm not really sure about this. Yeah. Da, 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 this is what's going on. What's the dynamic? What's happening and stuff? And you would check back with me. But now, when somebody has paid you to, to consult with them, they are open. They are literally handing you the keys. Right. And at that point, you have to go, okay, I'm, I got the keys. I need to be responsible for this. I, I need to be responsible because now I'm responsible for this person. And I was just wondering if that's, if you feel that, if you feel that pressure in your own life and if you feel that pressure when you do it, when you're doing the consultation, oh, most, most definitely, most definitely. One, the pressure is um, when you're talking to somebody who is in a vulnerable place, because if they're reaching out for a consultation, it's usually a situation that they need help with. And so and again, a- reason being because guys don't. This is another saying. Guys don't ask for directions. Because- guys don't ask for directions. But I will say this. The a lot of the directions, even the guys that do ask for directions, the information out there is so useless and inconsequential sure. because people are liars. So it's happy wife, happy life. That's all it's about. No, that's not what it's all about. And if that was in reverse, uh, where you go, uh, it, if you yeah. want a happy life, you you better keep your husband happy. Nobody would tolerate that. So right. it's one is that guys don't ask for directions. But even if, if if guys do ask for directions and society made it okay for people to reach out and say they were hurt, even if they did reach out, a lot of the people aren't equipped and don't have that information because most people don't operate in a in a uh, they operate in a disingenuous fashion where they're lying to themselves about their relationships, where they don't bring up what they're unhappy with, they don't communicate properly. On all that, so that's the 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 one part is those guys. There is not a pool of good information for them to reach out to, but I do feel the pressure because it's. Imp- I don't want to give these people the wrong information. Number one, right. because it, it could impact their lives negatively. And you could, you could just cash the check. Listen, keep I it can, moving. I talk for a living. I could fill up the hour with whatever bullshit I need to do. I don't want to do that. Yeah, and I I want to give them the proper advice. Because I want to help them be happy, as happy as when I, when I became happy with, with the advice that you gave me that saved my life by saving relationships. That made me happy. I want them to feel the same way. So I feel that pressure. But the second part that you're asking me as well, there are days where I'm like, man, I'm being lazy. And then I have a consultation and I go, I just told this guy that they have to get up and do this routine. I go, I got better get off my ass. Yeah. Because I literally just said things to this guy that I go, Shit, I forgot that I have to follow that too. Right. Like, I can't. I, it, it was today my best day? Was I living my best? No, I wasn't. Now, I don't lay the five bricks this the same way. I'm in a relationship now. But am I doing the same concept of laying the five bricks? Am I, for my career, am I Talking, laying the five am bricks? I, am I creating conversations? Am yeah. I, you know, I mean, one of the things that I do every time I go out to eat, and I very rarely don't go out to eat, you know, I will ask, look my waitress in the mouth and in the eyes and go, what is your name? And I introduce myself. Let me my tell you something. Dante. Just, mm-hmm. I don't mean to, I know I'm jumping in a lot here, but you're saying a lot of things. No, that no, are, no, I want you to jump in. This Sunday, my girl and I were out of town. We went to a restaurant and I always think of what you said. Just, you know, be more conversational, be nice to people, be good. And I'm always nice to people, but I'm very quiet. Yes. Yes. I'm never mean to people. And when I do and speak, that can I'm very be nice. perceived as, as whatever, because they they put their insecurities on you. Yeah. So the waiter comes over, uh, you know, some, you know, he's doing his thing. We're at like a Bob Evans. We're on the road and uh, he's very nice, but he's just kind of doing his thing. He's just kind of, you know, he's very nice. I stop him and I go, what's what's your name, by the way? He's like, my name is Will. I go, my name's Harry. This is my girl. 
uh, you know, we, you know, whatever, uh, you know, how you doing? Everything good. Very nice to him. And we were, we were just smile, always with a smile on my face, eye contact. At the end of the meal, like, you know, and every time he'd come over, can you do this for us? Can you, thank you. I really appreciate that, man. I'm sorry that's such a complicated order. Thank you. No rush on that, whatever. By the time we were done, before we left, Will said, hey, I just want to say, man, you guys, and my girl is huge on this. She's a big positive positivity yeah. person. I'm just, you know, I'm trying to, she's not a public figure, so I don't go into detail. Yeah. But she is super, very, always very nice, eye contact. By the time we were done, he goes, I just want to say, man, you, you guys were a, a ray of sunshine for mm -hmm. me today. Like, he was just so happy because I saw everything around him was chaotic. Yeah. It was like the morning rush or whatever. And just, and just to hear that. Now, that's not why I did it. I just did no. it because I want to be a good person. But you're like, God damn, I just impacted his day, even if it's for five minutes in yeah. a positive way. And that's something that you taught me with like communicating with people, try to impact their day. But it also made me feel better. Mm. It made me feel better to impact his day and his energy made me feel better. It made my girl feel better. So I just wanted to throw that in because you've mentioned that before and it literally just happened two days ago. And, and to think about what little effort it took. Sure, yeah. And how extensively it affected somebody's life. Is really, really interesting. It's a really interesting thing. I, I, I think that that is so dynamic to me. And but the other thing is true too. So, but we gotta we're gonna go into the Patreon. Yeah, here. we are gonna have to go into. Well, I want to talk here. about. I, 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 one of these proud boys. I met a proud boy, and he came up to me and he talked about Skankfest. Skank yeah. Let's let's talk about it on the Patreon. Is oh, really there we go. Story. We got a cliffhanger, guys. Yeah, yeah. If you want to hear more about it. Uh, go over to patreon.com slash manschool202. Uh, that's where we do the bonus content, and we're going to reveal this, this story. And also, we do listener mail over there. We give a lot of advice, and people can connect with us and, and get advice and things like that. Also, uh, since we brought it up, we are talking about consultations. Uh, if you want to get a consultation from me, reach out to me uh, via email, advicefromharry at gmail.com. And uh, you let me know what I can help you with in, in, in life, in relationships, whatever it is. We can uh, set up the rates and do a phone consultation and get you to live a happier life. Because, man, there's nothing better than than living a happy life. You know, it's yeah. not always perfect, but, man, it, it can always be better. Yeah. Uh, everything, uh, you know, y'all can get my consultation. You know, DanteNero.com. Click on consult. Y'all know how to get me social media wise. Just Google me, bitch. Um and uh man uh GYBB get your balls back WWDD what would Dante do to sexual revolutions being podcasted I love y'all man um and and I'm I'm actually going through a transition myself in terms of how I I I I'm, I want this show to be and uh man I appreciate you check us out on Patreon man don't forget to follow the uh YouTube page like and follow share let's move this let's get this movement out there. I want you all to be a part of, of, of getting this movement out there and not something that's just marketed for the sake of marketing because it's, this is the real uncut. Uh, the pure stuff. There's the no baby stuff. laxative in this. Yeah, How no, do I know that and why? That's none no of your Benita. business. How do I know that? Anyway, um, yo, we're out. <laughs>